Why does nature seem to favor traits that lead to longer necks as species evolve? Now, since I am not a professional in this field, I don't have like a definitive answer, but it appears, at least to me, to be mainly centered around food. Welcome back to Paleopedia. So long necks have evolved several times throughout life's history, and they almost always seem to be food related. So right off the top of my head, I can list several different groups of animals that have independently evolved their long necks. Those from present to past being giraffes, birds, sauropod dinosaurs, the plesiosaur marine reptiles, the tanystrophids, and dinocephalosaurus. And I've already discussed the tanystrophids and dinocephalosaurus in this past video and even another video before, but there's a couple differences between those two species. The tanystrophids evolved their longer neck simply by elongating the length of their individual vertebra, just kind of like what giraffes have done. But dinocephalosaurus evolved their long necks by adding more vertebra to their spinal column. We see that evolutionary method in the plesiosaurs, some sauropod dinosaurs, and the birds that do have long necks. This is called convergent evolution, when two unrelated species evolve similar traits to meet similar needs. And like I said, I'm not a professional in this field, I just like talking about this stuff, but in my opinion, it appears as though the evolutionary drive behind these longer necks simply comes down to food. Like in this last video, Dinocephalosaurus and the Tanystrophids evolved a long neck to be able to kind of sneak attack schools of fish, but they appear to have hunted differently than the other. The Tanystrophids had a long neck similar to Dinocephalosaurus, but it was a lot stiffer, but was able to be swung upwards really quickly and it's likely that since they don't appear to have been very good swimmers they would lie in wait at the bottom of whatever body of water they were in for a fish to pass above them and then snap their heads up and grab the fish. On the other hand, Dinocephalosaurus appears to have been a pretty well adapted swimmer, swimming in a not too dissimilar manner to the later plesiosaurs, and it used its more flexible snake-like neck to swim around schools of fish and snap its head through the fish, grabbing individuals as it did so. The plesiosaurs did the same thing. They had more vertebra in their necks, which made their necks longer, but also a lot more flexible and snake-like, and they used this to hunt. Rather than plowing through a school of fish, hoping to grab something as they did so, the plesiosaurs could stay outside the school of fish, where their large bodies wouldn't spook the fish as much, and they could then corral the fish together and then snap their head through without alerting the fish that they're coming with their larger bodies. On land, the first animals to evolve really long necks were the sauropods, and they did this to attain food as well. The earliest forms of sauropods, the prosauropods, were the largest dinosaurs at the time, and they would use their longer necks and larger bodies to reach the tops of trees and taller plants that other animals weren't able to get to. As sauropods evolved to get larger, their necks got longer as well to compensate. Some sauropods evolved a lifestyle similar to modern day giraffes where they stood with a more upright posture with their necks being long to reach the tops of trees, whereas most other sauropods, at least in the Jurassic period, the Diplodocid dinosaurs, they were more horizontally postured and used their long necks to feed in an arc without moving their bodies. The longer neck allowed a greater reach and a wider arc and them not having to move their bodies to reach those foods saved energy and allowed them to get even bigger. And then after the sauropods and the plesiosaurs, birds started evolving their longer necks, especially after the dinosaurs went extinct. A lot of birds don't have really long necks because they don't necessarily need long necks, but some birds do have long necks like swans and geese. Swans and geese, when they're sitting on the surface of the water, they're not really diving birds, so they use their longer necks to reach the water plants that they're feeding on at the bottom of the pond or lake or whatever it is that they're feeding in. Other birds with long necks, herons, storks, vultures, they use their long necks to reach food sources. Herons use their long necks to jab into the water and grab unsuspecting amphibians and fish. Vultures use their longer necks to dig inside the carcasses of the animals that they're scavenging on. Storks kind of do both. 
It's all related to food. And then finally, giraffes have long necks for the same reason sauropods had long necks. They can reach the tops of trees without having to worry about other animals competing with them, and they don't even have to use a lot of energy to get to those leaves. When you're as tall as the trees that house the food that you're feeding on, you don't really need to waste energy, so a long neck is really beneficial for that. So as you can see, having a long neck has a very clear evolutionary advantage no matter what feeding style you use. Whether it's to reach food that other animals can't reach, conserve energy while feeding, or to even simply hide a larger body from the prey before striking, having a long neck is evidently the better option.